elements. They not only play a critical role in chemistry, but also in our day to day life. If you look around yourself, most of the things that you see, they are ultimately made up of elements like carbon, iron, sulfur, oxygen, hydrogen and so on. To your surprise, or maybe not, there exists more than 118 elements and we are still counting. So do you think that it is feasible to know the properties of each of these elements? Not really. And that is where we have grouped these elements based on similarity in their properties. And that's how we have got the periodic table. And that is exactly where we talk about periodic classification of elements. In this video, as always, we will focus on the concepts for a clear understanding and also on important topics from exam perspective. So we will cover the following topics, Dobriner's law of triads, Newland's law of octaves, Manlip's periodic table, modern periodic table, trend along periods and groups in modern periodic table, and finally, the advantages of the modern periodic table. What is a periodic table? So you can see the periodic table on screen and it is a tabular display of chemical elements. Most importantly, organized on the basis of their atomic numbers, electronic configuration and chemical properties. So you see, you have so many elements, like 118 elements and still counting. So it's going to be a task to organize these elements on some basis. But that is what we have exactly done in a periodic table. Now, this entire lesson is all about how do we organize these elements as in on what basis and why do we select that particular parameter as the basis. So, as we move on, we will learn more and more about uh, how the elements are organized, what are the patterns and behavior that we see in that we see on the periodic table. The question is, why at all do we need to classify these elements? Let's look at it this way. Let us suppose that I am given a basket which has mixed fruits and vegetables of all types. And now I have been asked to pick a tomato from this basket. Now I really need to find one to get one. However, I managed to get one. But just imagine, had there been different baskets for different categories of fruits and vegetables. For example, let's say there's one small basket for green vegetables, one small basket for fruits, one small basket for citrus fruits and so on. So my task would have been easier. So when it comes to tomato, I can just go to one specific basket where it would be. So in a very similar way, when we talk about these 118 elements, a lot of these elements share many similar properties. So all of these elements have been grouped together in one group. So now what happens is we just have few groups to understand and if we know them, we know the properties of all these 118 elements. So that's how a periodic classification of element helps. Why is it called periodic table? Periodic because elements repeat their physical and chemical properties after a periodic interval. So when we study this table in more detail, we will see that let, let's talk about this element lithium. So we would see that lithium and then again after a periodic interval sodium, again after a periodic interval potassium, they all have similar physical and chemical properties. Now since elements repeat their properties after a periodic interval, like every after every eighth element so every eighth element is having same behavior so it is periodic and table because the elements are arranged in a tabular form so it's like it looks like a table right therefore it is periodic table an interesting thing that we learn now is how did we uh, basically reach to the current periodic table so a quick look at the history 1789 Antoine Lavoisier published a list of 33 chemical elements and all these 33 elements were grouped into gases, metals, non-metals and earths. A few years later, Dobriner observed that many of these elements could be grouped into triads, that is group of three, based on their chemical properties. So it's like based on the similarity in their chemical properties, he uh, created these triads, that is group of three elements. And 
based on that based on some other observations he came up with the law of triads so we will learn about that a little later again a few years later in 1866 john newland arranged elements in the order of increasing atomic masses so atomic mass was the basis for john newland now by that time the total number of elements also increased from 33 to 56 again in 1869 mandelieff arranged on the basis of atomic mass and also on the basis of similarity in chemical properties and now we had 63 elements again a few years later in 1913 Henry Moseley showed that atomic number of an element is a more fundamental property than its atomic mass and then came the modern periodic table where the elements were arranged on the basis of their atomic number right so this is how the modern periodic table came into picture so as we move on we will learn about dobreiner's triad law we will also learn about newland's law of octets we will learn about mendeleev's periodic table and finally we will learn about the modern periodic table dobreiner a german chemist tried arranging elements into groups of 3 based on their chemical properties So Dobreiner said that if these three elements in a particular triad are arranged in the order of their increasing atomic masses the atomic mass of the middle element is approximately equal to the average of the atomic masses of the other two elements so now we will understand dobreiner's triad using an example so just how we said that he kind of created triads of elements that is three elements put together formed a triad so let's look at this triad here we have lithium sodium and potassium so according to dobreiner the atomic mass of the middle element that is sodium is roughly the average of the atomic masses of the other two elements so that means what is the atomic mass of sodium it is 23 now let us calculate the average of 7 and 39 so average of 7 and 39 would be 46 by 2 which is equal to 23 and that's equal to the atomic mass of the middle element and that's what exactly dobreiner said so in a way dobreiner's tried Uh, showed that there was some kind of relationship between the atomic mass and the properties because we saw that all these three elements they shared similar chemical properties and also there was this pattern of atomic mass which was seen so there was some way some relationship between atomic mass and properties and this not only this dobreiner triad was true for all the triads of dobreiner for example if even if you look at this one so the atomic mass of strontium is 87.6 now if you take the average of these two it will be 40 plus 1 plus 137 divided by 2 so this is going to be 0.1771 divided by 2 so 2 is 16 again 2 is 16 point something so which was roughly the atomic mass of strontium right because here also you see the word roughly is there so it's not going to be the exact average but roughly the average of the atomic masses of the other two elements there were certain limitations of the dobreiner triad and that limitation was during that time there were total 33 elements known out of those 33 elements only three triads were found three triads mean 3 plus 3 plus 3 total nine elements were part of this dobreiner triads what about the rest so they did not fall into this category so basically it was like only few triads were found and all elements were not covered by dobreiner's triad law so that was a like major limitation and therefore it proved that this was not really um, very valid in 1866 john newland arranged the then known elements on the basis of their atomic masses he didn't really bother about the properties of these elements now newland observed that every eighth element showed similar properties as the first element and this is what he called as the newland's law of octaves what he did was he started with hydrogen and continued till the 56th element so that's how he continued now as per newland's law of octaves every eighth element had properties similar to that of the first 
so that ways it's like uh, let's talk about hydrogen so the eighth element after hydrogen is fluorine if we talk about lithium eighth element after lithium is sodium so basically according to newland lithium and sodium had similar properties similarly beryllium and magnesium had similar properties so every eighth element is going to be similar to the first one so that was the newland's law of octaves and that's the reason it was called octave because it was more about the periodicity of the eighth element so new newland very clearly noticed periodicity in the property of elements and that is why it was named octaves in fact if you look at this table it says sa re ga ma pa dha ni so basically just to show the seven notes where we i mean using which we have placed these elements just to show that those who are similar they all fall under the same uh, column right so that was about the newland's law of uh, octaves unfortunately newland's law of octaves also had limitations the first limitation being applicable only up to calcium so if you look at this table you see hydrogen lithium beryllium and so on only up to calcium the law of newland's octaves was true after that it wasn't true so basically after calcium we did not notice the similarity in the properties of the eighth element and the first one so that was not there okay the second limitation was that new elements discovered later whose properties did not fit into the new uh, into the law of octaves now during the time when newland came up with this law <coughs> there were a total of 56 elements but later with time as new elements were discovered it was found that there was no place for them because they were not fitting into the law of octaves in fact even within those 56 elements after calcium the other elements were not following the law of octaves so these were like some big flaws with this law newland also adjusted two elements in the same slot for example if you look at this uh, table you would see that cobalt and nickel they are in the same slot similarly these two elements are again in the same slot so basically what does that mean now if two elements are exactly at the same position that means they have exactly same properties so in that case why are they two different elements if cobalt and nickel they are like exactly same then why are they two different elements if they are two different elements then there has to be some differences between the two so therefore it is not possible that two elements will occupy the same slot so this was another major drawback he also put some unlike elements under the same node so it was also observed that some elements who had which had very different properties but they were still in the same column like as i was mentioning before that for example lithium sodium potassium they had similar properties so they were in the same under the same column but there were certain other elements for example if we talk about iron fe so fe shared similar properties with cobalt and nickel but if you look at its position it is far away from cobalt and nickel whereas if you look at fluorine it lies in the same column as cobalt and nickel whereas fluorine is very much different in terms of properties than cobalt or nickel so these were some of the limitations because ideally if we are placing elements based on the similarity of properties then different elements should not be in the same column same element should not be far away right but those are where some of the things that were getting observed in this newland's law of octaves though there were limitations but one thing was again sure that the periodicity existed in the property of elements that there is some kind of periodicity which exists however something else is going wrong because of which we are not able to find out that perfect periodic table but yes there is some relation there is some periodicity in the properties so now that we learned about dobriner's law and newland's law a quick question time did dobriner strides also exist in the columns of newland's octaves so if we have to compare the two so here on the screen you see newland's law of octaves right now if you try to find out the dobriner strides you will see that there is just one triad which exist and that is this one lithium sodium potassium other than the rest of the two triads they do not seem to exist on the newland's octave 
Let's look at one more question. A, B and C are elements of Dobriner's triad. If atomic mass of A is 7 and that of C is 39, what is the atomic mass of B? So Dobriner's triad law states that the atomic mass of the middle element that is B is equal to the average of atomic masses of A and C. So that means the atomic mass of B is equal to 7 plus 39 divided by 2 that is equal to 23. So this is the atomic mass of B. So in this video we saw that Dobriner's law of triads as well as Newland's law of octaves they had their own limitations. So what happened after that? So that is what we are going to study in the next video where we will learn in detail about the Mandelieff's periodic table. So stay tuned.